B-wheels writhing, weakening, steel sheets scraping screens, and Prusha's pushing plates. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 178. Let's get into it. Starting off here with an Elegoo Neptune printer that's having a bit of a bad day. See, it's got a case of the palm dandruff here where the v wheels are basically well squishing out because of how much pressure is applied to them this is a pretty easy thing to fix and the user actually technically has it circled the eccentric nut you can use that little eccentric nut to tighten or loosen the actual pressure that those wheels have on the track that they're riding in we did an entire video on this we'll card to it if you do want to take a look it is something that you have to do periodically with v wheel style printers even if it's brand new it is good to check it the best thing in our opinion is to make sure that the wheel does not slide easily if you're holding it and then moving the entire plate, but you also don't want it so tight that it wants to drag instead of roll. It's a difficult thing to get perfect, but there is a lot of slop involved in this. And if it is a little bit too tight, well, they'll wear themselves down to where it's no longer too tight again. See, the problem is once it gets to a certain point, you have to replace the wheels and we're at the point, especially with that middle wheel, that it's time to go ahead and replace it. Thankfully, they're relatively cheap. You can pick them up on Amazon for a couple of bucks. We'll link some in the description. And if you guys do want, we can revisit this video and redo it with, you know, newer cameras and everything like that. So let me know. This issue of these V-wheels shredding apart is becoming less and less of a problem as machines move away from V-wheels and they're moving into bearings and, well, bushings bushings will go through similar issues that we see here but you won't notice it as obvious you'll just notice more kind of wiggle in your prints that's something that i'm very curious to see with bamboos especially the x1 carbon as they get older do you notice it in your prints like do you know when it's time to go ahead and change out the xx because you can't change the the, the the bushings you can't can't do that or do you just like have to put it on a maintenance schedule like it like you would a car for an oil change relatively easy thing to miss especially if you're not checking underneath your printer so good on this user for finding all of that thing is 50 hours on the machine definitely wasn't set right from the factory hopefully with how new this machine is elegu will help you out always check your plate is correctly installed before setting off your printer first off top comment on this one yeah guys i don't think this one was caused by moist filament uh, a plus because that is like the most common issue that we see here and then the next comment saying you never know you know what i like you guys the two of you you're cool i didn't know that the beds were that close to the screens on the a series of printers on bamboos and now i'm like really nervous about this because technically they're not very far from just shattering their actual touch screen which would theoretically remove their ability to interact with the machine itself without replacing the part. Now the screen does slide out of the way and I guess theoretically when you're printing you could move it but that's like one of those issues that I've never really considered to be a problem because most of my machines the bed is on top of the screen. It doesn't ever interact in a way that, that it could hit the screen. So yes absolutely a good thing to look at. If you are having issues aligning your beds I'm sure that there are prints out there, whether it's on printables, Thangs, Maker World, whatever, that you could put on your bamboo to either, one, protect the screen, right? Put a little plastic ring around it so if it does get hit by the bed, you hear it, you notice it, whatever. Or something that will help you better align your build plates. Again, not something that's ever happened to me, but I'd love to know if it's ever happened to you all down in those comments where... There'll be great advice. So if you are having issues with your printers, we're here to help you. My name's Grant. This is Print Fix Friday, episode 178, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you do want to get your fails in these episodes so we can help you, you can do so by reaching out to us on all the social medias, or you can make a video on YouTube and tag us in it where we'll be able to see it and reply. I actually really enjoy that kind of thing. So like, if you can do a video, that'd be super cool. Hey, if you do like these type of videos, Leave a like, get subscribed, all of those things. Moving on here, we got, why does my printer catch on fire when attempting to use Octoprint? 
Oh boy, this is a V3 SE they've had for a couple of months. They've been using Octoprint on a Windows laptop the whole time. However, as of the other day, it started catching fire when they tried to plug it in. So let's take a look. No. Remember, kids, if you let the magic smoke out, the electronics no longer work. All electronics run out of magic smoke. This is a shorted connector of something. I don't know what is shorted, but something in there is angry and it is shorting and it is creating a spark, which is not technically creating a fire, but it is absolutely a fire risk. Hopefully it doesn't also kill the computer that it's plugged into, so don't do that, please. Likely some bit of metal has gotten into the connector or there's a bit of metal that has connected across something on the main board that is causing a dead short across the USB-C connector. There is no user serviceable way to fix this. Probably. Thing you can check for is to look in that USB port. Is there crap in the USB port? If there is, get a toothpick, clean it out. Something that's non-metallic, that's not going to conduct electricity, get something like that. We like wooden toothpicks because they're really easy to trim down if you need to make it thinner, and they generally handle a fair bit of stress. They're great for cleaning out charge ports and phones. When was the last time you cleaned the charge port in your phone? It's probably dirty. Go and clean it. But because these printers don't go in and out of your pocket, I can't imagine that this is going to be something that is from grease, grime, pocket, lint, God knows what other random crap you're getting yourselves into. It's likely from the actual cables themselves. So check to make sure there's nothing inside of that port that would potentially cause a short. Maybe there's a bent pin or something like that. And if there is, maybe you can bend it back. Maybe you can't, but most likely it's time for a new main board. And I mean, while you're at it, you have the SE, which isn't the clipper variant of the Ender 3 V3. So you could just put a clipper board in it. And yes, I do have to agree with the commenters. They're basically saying, so you did it again for camera. You need a new main board. I understand that people do want to show what's going on with their machines, but ultimately if it is catching fire, don't do it again. We'll trust you. That is a heck of a short. I'm guessing that is mains voltage or a fair bit of five volts being shorted across that port. It absolutely would be a fire hazard if left unattended. Time for new main board. I would do an autopsy on that just to see what's going on since you got to take the board out anyways. And hey, if you do, send us some photos. Would love to be able to update the community on this. If you guys have any ideas of what happened here other than it's a short or specifically how you think it could happen, let me know in those comments. I'd love to be able to help this person out, but I do understand that when your printer is a fire-breathing dragon, it's probably time to just go ahead and fix it. Next up, from one of our Patreon Discord members, Jake, who's been dealing with some problems with his Prusa Mark 3.5, where on the back edge, of this machine, specifically the back left. He's been having issues with bed adhesion. We can see that eh, the first layer is a little bit too close in some areas, a little bit too far in other areas. And then the second layer is just not laying down all that well. And in the back left of the machine, we can see it's not really sticking at all either. And the actual height map from the printer is a telltale problem of, uh, well, she's just not probing correctly in that area. So we asked her some more photos and well, we got these. Does anybody notice the problem? Let you think about it. Cause I saw it immediately. So zip ties, the zip ties are connecting with this back plate. The back plate on Prusa Mark series, right? 3.5, 3.94, 4S, whatever all have a bed connector cover here. That cover sits above the actual print bed. We have the PCB here, then we have a printed part that sits on top of it. So if you have your zip ties pointing down and it goes to probe the bed with the pin to probe, it's not going to contact there. It's gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until it does eventually work. 
creating this ridiculous graph. To be clear, there are still some other issues with this, and I'm guessing the area that we see here is when it's coming back across after going to the right, now it's going down, then back to the left again, that it is once again contacting the bed cover. And telling that to Jake, he went ahead and redid it, and yeah, it's still a little bit low in that area, and high in some others. The variation is 1.198 millimeters, basically 1.2 millimeters, which is way too much for a print bed like this. The other thing that can be impacted here is the actual plate itself. This is not a Prusa plate. They don't look like Prusa plate, so it's not a Prusa plate. It might not be the same thickness, and the PEI coating itself might not be the right thickness either, which can cause some irregular readings on the probe. This is an issue if you're using an aftermarket plate on the 3.9 and above series, where they use the nozzle probing, if your actual grits of PEI are so large that it is blocking the probe's ability to just boop the bed, right? Some areas might be high, some areas might be low, creating kind of a rough surface. And so we recommended outside of moving those zip ties to install the Nylock mod and the silicone spacer mod, which should flatten out the actual heat bed of the machine itself. Newer Prusas do this. I'm not certain if the 3.5 does, but I know the 3.9 and I know the 4 and 4S do. If you are starting a print, it is good to let your print bed come to temperature and then hang out at that temperature for a little bit, especially PCB heaters, which are what the Prusa Mark series uses. They will flex as they heat up and cool down because metal expands as it gets hot and those traces are made of copper, so they expand and they contract and the bed moves a little bit. PID normally solves this, that is the on-off frequency of the bed. However, it's not perfect and on machines like the XL and the 3.9 and above for sure, because those are the ones that I've actually used so far, they all wait a specified amount of time, it varies based on how long the machine has been at temperature before starting the actual probing sequence because you want to make sure the bed is fully at temperature and not going to bow a bunch on you while it is printing. So if you don't have a printer that waits, you can code that into the actual G-code yourself. In most cases, the actual way to do that in your start code is to use the G4 command and then just set the time. It's normally in seconds, so G4 space S60 for 60 seconds, and that will wait 60 seconds after it's heated before it goes and does all the homing sequences and whatever it might be. That can help out a lot in trying to really dial in your machine, and well, also having a chamber can help and extra heaters and all of that, but let's just start with the dwell command, otherwise known as G4. But otherwise, I've never measured my Prusas. They just kind of figure it out and their first layers look great. So there's really nothing for me to complain about there. I don't know if it can deal with one and a half millimeters or in this case, 1.2 millimeters worth of deviation. It might be able to, but I'd love to know from you all, I know a lot of you out there are like Reth and like to chase unicorns. We interviewed Reth a while back. I think you would enjoy that one where he does try to get things dead on perfect. I'd love to know how close you've gotten a bed mesh to zero. And is this actually acceptable? To me, this isn't acceptable, but because I've never measured, I don't know if any of my machines are in acceptable range, but what I know is they work. So ultimately, if the printer works, meh. I guess it's acceptable. And if we're talking about acceptable, the people that are beyond acceptable are those with the names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. If you do want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel to make content like this for you every single week, almost 200 weeks in a row, that's a lot of time. You can join channel membership in the links down below where you can support us for as little as $1 a month. But hey, at the $10 tier, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server where we do a lot of behind the scenes work. That is all I have for you all today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy this, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. And hey, click some of those videos below me. I think you'll enjoy them. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. V-Wheels Writhing Re... <laughs> Damn it! Those W's are tough, man.